Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg, and here we're going to look at areas between curves, uh, a topic that you would encounter uh, typically in a second semester calculus course. So we're going to find areas between functions of the form y equals f of x, and we'll find areas between functions of the form x equals g of y. And on, in this video, I'm just going to focus on setting them up. Typically, that I think that's the difficulty. Um, a lot of these problems, once you get them set up, the integration, I think, tends to be not too bad. Okay, so suppose we want to find this area trapped between these two functions, y equals f of x and y equals g of x. The idea, again, I think is, is relatively straightforward. If we computed the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's going to give us the area, this shaded area, all the way down, right, between the function and the x-axis, which is more than what we want. Well, what we can easily do is just subtract away the area that's bounded by that function g of x. So if I take the entire area and subtract away the area underneath g of x, well, I'm simply going to be left with the area between those two those two functions. So of course we can combine this and say well this is just the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. And that is the formula. So it's nothing geometrically I think too tricky to come up with. Um, likewise suppose our functions are in the form x equals g of y and x equals f of y. Well, the same idea, if we computed the definite integral, notice our limits of integration are now coming from the y-axis. If we compute the definite integral from c to d of the function f of y, that would give me the entire area bounded between that function and the y-axis. I should say a function, that function of y, it's not a function of x. And the same thing, we would just subtract away the area bounded by that function g of y. Whoops so used to writing x's. So we would just take f of y minus g of y. And again, in that case, we're integrating with respect to y. So if you have a picture, if you have a nice graph and all this is right in front of you, it's usually pretty straightforward to set up. That's not always the case. So in this one, let's set up the integral to find the area of the region bounded by the function y equals cosine of x and y equals two minus cosine of x. So this is the way I would think about it. Already I know that I'm integrating from 0 to 2 pi somewhere, but maybe I have to split this up a little bit, and we'll talk about that in this example. So one thing that I try to do is find points of intersection. So maybe I don't know what these graphs look like, or maybe you have graphs that you're not so familiar with. Let's find points of intersection. So to do that, we'll take our two functions and set them equal to each other. So cosine of x equals 2 minus cosine x. Well, I can add cosine of x to both sides. That'll give me 2 cosine of x equals 2. Divide by 2, cosine of x equals 1. Well, I'm thinking, where does cosine of x equal 1 on the unit circle from um, 0 to 2 pi? Well, it equals uh, cosine of x equals 1 at 0. And the next place that cosine of x equals 1 is going to be at 2 pi. So, okay, so I know that there's no points of intersection between these two functions on this interval from 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> well, I still need to figure out sort of which one is the larger function. And to do that, you could just take a test point. So if I test, let's say, I don't know, how about um, the value x equals pi over 2. Well, notice for, maybe I'll label this as my first function and this is my second function. For my first function, I would have y equals cosine of pi over 2, and y equals cosine of pi over 2 is simply going to equal 0. For our second function, y equals 2 minus cosine of pi over 2, well, that's again just going to be 2 minus 0 or 2. So I know that the larger function is going to be the function 2 minus cosine of x. So that tells me that to set up this integral, it's from 0 to 2 pi, the larger function was... 2 minus cosine of x, and I would have to subtract away from that the function cosine of x, dx, and of course we could combine this a little bit more. We would have to compute the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2 minus, what is this, 2 minus 2 cosine of x. And again, I don't think that would be the most miserable function in the world to integrate. 
but that would now be the definite integral that you would need to compute. So let's look at another one. Let's set up the integral to find the region bounded by x equals y squared minus 4y and x equals 2y minus y squared. So notice here we're not, giving, we're not given an interval. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to think about points of intersection. So I'll take y squared minus 4y equals 2y minus y squared. Okay, so I'm thinking, what's the best way to solve this? I think we can uh, just uh, add y squared to both sides. That'll give me 2y squared on the left. I could also subtract 2y from both sides. So if I subtract 2y, um, it looks like I'll be left with 2y squared minus 6y equals 0. Well, I could divide both sides by 2. That would leave me with y squared minus 3y equals 0. I could factor out the y and be left with y minus 3 in parentheses. So that's going to give me the solution of y equals 0 and y equals 3. So again, I'm thinking, okay, which one of these functions needs to, which one of these functions is larger over that interval? And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just take a test point. So I know that they're crisscrossing or they're intersecting at 0 and 3. So I need to take a test point in that interval. Um, how about the value y equals 1? That looks like that would make the arithmetic easy. So again, let me label this one 1 and this one 2. If I put it into the first function of y, I would have x equals 1 squared minus 4 times 1. And if I plug that into the second function, I'll have x equals 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. Well, 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3. 2 minus 1 squared is going to be 1. So this is going to be the larger function over that interval. So that means simply when I go to set it up, the points of intersection correspond to the limits of integration. So from 0 to 3, I take the larger function, 2y minus y squared, and I subtract away the other function, y squared minus 4y. Again, here we're integrating with respect to y. Of course, we could clean this up a little bit. So let's see, what are we going to get? Um, it looks like we're going to have, well, I guess we've almost got it a second ago, right? So negative y squared minus y squared, that'll be negative 2y squared. I'm going to have 2y minus negative 4y, or that's going to be 2y um, plus 4y. So 2y plus 4y is going to be positive 6y. And now you're off to the races. Again, I don't think this is the worst definite integral to, to evaluate. So um, one remark, <clears throat> areas will, you know, always be, well, I guess technically if, if it's the same function, it would be zero, but you're not going to see those. Areas will always be positive, right? So if you compute this definite integral, right, you do a bunch of arithmetic, dot, 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 and at the end of the day, you get some negative number, that's clearly wrong. If I was running out, of time, running out of time on an exam, I would just make it positive and hope that, I mean, if you get these two functions backwards, if, they're, if you have the wrong one being the bigger one, if you mix them up, you'll, get, uh, you'll just get the wrong sign is what's going to happen. So I would just cross my fingers and hope that, that maybe I got those mixed up. But you should get a positive number at the end if you... If you don't, again, that's a clear indication that you've done something incorrect. So, okay, so just a basic introduction. Again, you're finding points of intersection in a lot of these. Just because they give you an interval, don't assume that you just integrate from 0 to 2 pi. Maybe there was a point of intersection. Maybe these, these functions cross, you know, they didn't, obviously. But suppose they crossed at x equals pi. Well, then um, what you're going to have to do in that case is split them up. But that'll be another topic for another time. So again, just a little introduction to areas between curves.